Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to build a convolutional neural network from scratch in PyTorch. And today we're going to implement slightly modified Linet5 model. So yeah, let's get into it. So I want to start with a bit of uh, overall architecture of CovNets. So basically for image classification, you just pass the image, you get the feature extractor, then you pass it to classification block, and then you get the prediction. So the feature extractor block consists of convolution layer, pooling layer and activation. And convolution layer obviously has a filter that moves around the image and learns how to extract the relevant feature. And the pooling layer is moving the filter, which is not learn anything, but basically extract the maximum values or average values. Then when we extract all of these features, we pass it to fully connected layer, then we got the activation function and then we get our prediction. So today we're going to implement the Linet5 model from 90s and it's a pretty simple model. It has three convolution, two pooling layers. In the paper they use average pooling with some weights, we're going to use just max pooling without any weights. And why max pooling? Because it performs the best. So yeah. Then we have two fully connected layers. If you want to know more about the convolution in general, I link to my blog in the description. So yeah, if you want to know more, just check it out. I think with all that information, we can go straight into the coding. So yeah, we're going to code in a Google call app. Obviously you have free GPU there, so it's pretty useful. And yeah, you get all, li all the libraries. You don't need to create the environment. So it's straightforward and easy to use. So with the libraries, you implement torch torch and then torch vision for the data set transforms oh, we should do it this way and I guess we need Matplotlib for for plots. All right, that's it. We also want to check if we have GPU available. So torch CUDA. There you go. Uh, we don't have it. I haven't set it yet, but there you go. So we got all of this set up and we can start implementing our model. Linet5. And in an init function, we pass input channels, which in our case is one, because it's a grayscale image. When you have a colored image, RGB, you have three channels. So, and output classes, which is gonna be 10, because we have 10 digit to recognize. We need to pass the sub super function. We need to call the super function. Without it, the, basically the PyTorch model doesn't work. So it's necessary. And yeah, we can start to implement our layers. So convolution one is equal to conv 2 d in channels is equal to in channels. Then we have out channels, which is which is equal to six, as you can see on the architecture. Um, kernel size is equal to five. Uh, stride is equal to one, and padding is equal to two. We pad it by two because the, the images that we have is 28 on 28 but as you can see on the architecture the, the input is 32 on 32 so we need to upsample it to keep all the volumes throughout the network this only happens in the first layer i forgot to define myself all right we need a ROLU function in the origin, original paper they used a uh, sigmoid function and tan h but uh, Ryu just has the best result of all of it so we're gonna use this 
max pulling to the uh, kernel size is 2 and stride is 2. So I'm just copy this, which will be much faster. And yeah, we obviously don't do any paddings in the next layers. Stride is the same. We just have out channel 16 and input is 6. Then we have 16 and 120. We just gotta change the name and yeah. So then we initialize the fully connected layers. So first one is with in features of 120 and out features 84. The next one is, so basically the last one is in features 84 and out features is the number of classes so 10 in our case so yeah that's basically it in the init function then we define the forward function so forward we pass image so i'm gonna add some comments to just let you know how the what's the shape of the image throughout the whole network um, so basically we pass the batch of images and the size of it is one channel 28 on 28 so after first convolution it's gonna be so yeah we pass it through first convolution and the size is gonna be pretty much the same but we have more output channels then we pass it through ReLU and max point. Then the shape is gonna be we downsize it, downsize it by two, so it's gonna be 14, 14, and also six channels. All right. I do this. It's gonna be faster. So yeah, convolutional two, we get 16 and 10 on 10. Then we downsize it by two again, and we got the uh, five by five and 16 of feature maps. All right, then we got the last convolutional layer, which is gonna, I already pass it through value because we don't have any max pulling later on. So, count three from x right so the shape is going to be 120 one and one and obviously we can't pass this shape to linear layer so we need to flatten it so we have a torch function flatten and we just yeah we basically flat the 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 output of the convolutional layer. So the shape of it is... And now we are ready to pass it to linear layer. So... So we... The shape is 84. And then... We just pass it through the last layer and yeah the output should be 10 the number of classes that's basically it so that's the whole model the whole implementation and we're just gonna test it if it works for random numbers so let's initialize it and 32 28 28 let's see oh. linear to 5 perfect it works but let's check the shape the output shape yeah it definitely works 
then now we need to train it. So we're going to define the hyperparameters. So learning rate one e minus four epochs is twenty. Um, batch size is thirty two. Loss function is cross entropy. Loss uh, optimizer is atom. So we also need to define model first. So model is the five. All right, and yeah. So we pass the learning rate to it. All right, I think that's it when it comes to the hyperparameters. Also, I already copied the data set from the tutorial on MNIS2, how to download it in a collab. I don't see much of a sense to basically write it down again. Two things that I added is basically we normalize the data from zero to one range by this uh, normalize comment. And we also lead the data set into validation set and train set. That basically two things that I added. You can copy it from my GitHub, so just check it out. And yeah, we can go straight to train function. So train step, uh, we pass the data set. And yeah, we iterate over the data set. And first we got to define that model is in a train mode. So what does it mean? Basically, if you have, um, if you train your model, you use dropout, for example, or batch normalization. And when it comes to evaluation, you don't want to use dropout because you don't want to drop random nodes, right? So by putting the model in a certain mode, you can you can train it and evaluate. So it's pretty useful, especially when you use. That's why I said dropout or something. In this case, there is doesn't matter much, but yeah, it's a good practice. So yeah, we iterate over data set and we pass it to our model. So the output loss, also we need to collect the loss, which is gonna be book loss. All right, we gotta import NumPy also, I forgot. And yeah, hey, let me choose. So loss is gonna be from output and y. We add epoch loss. We add it to the epoch class. And obviously I forgot about the one of the most important thing. Need to zero the gradient before you train it. It's a yeah, common mistake. Just be aware of it and an optimizer step. So we're going to return the mean. So basically the average of the epoch loss. So then we can trace at each epoch what was the loss and we can plot it later on. So the validation function is pretty much the same. So So we change it to evaluation. We obviously don't optimize anything. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we do the test step where we measure the accuracy of the model. But um, we need to first do the accuracy function. So we pass the output and the target. So as you know, the, the output shape is batch and 10 of the classes. And we don't pass it through the softmax because the cross entropy has already built softmax in it. But when we want to calculate the accuracy to peak, the, the highest probability prediction. We need to put the softmax on it first. So the output is uh, 
so yeah we just put the apply the softmax on the first axis so basically on the classes and the prediction then is that's a probability distribution from 0 to 1 and we need to get the argmax from it so basically we need to know what's the argument with the highest value so for example if we pass 4 and the 4 has value 0 0.9 we need to have an index of 4 so then the output shape will be 1 because we only have one value and then the accuracy will be target all right and we divide it by the batch so yeah we get the average accuracy all right so now we can do the test step which is pretty much the same what we did before i'm just gonna create the um create the empty list that we're going to collect all the accuracies we iterate up over the data set we got the prediction um yeah. and we basically append the result of accuracy function yes yeah so output and y perfect and what we print is accuracy so we print the average accuracy over the data set so again we take a mean and yeah we multiply it by 100 so it's in the percents and pretty much it so now we can just do the training function the reason why i'm basically wrote this all function so in the next tutorials i'm gonna do alexnet and more advanced networks so it will be pretty much easier for us to go through it and we just copy and paste this function so then we just initialize model and just pass to it and train it now we can go straight into the training training is going to be for epoch and also there's a really cool library you can check this out um it basically is a progress bar and it's 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 damn easy to use so for epoch and so then we're gonna use it and yeah we just write the epochs Epoch. and yeah you're gonna see the progress bar looks really nice and you know it's basically easy to use we also need to define the train loss which is yeah, train us and validation loss. So we just append the train step from, oh, and we also need to get the data set. Let's load all the iterators from the data set and you see this function is just pretty easy to use you just pass the batch size you got the all iterators and yeah sorted so we pass train iterator validation loss And at the end, we're just going to do the test step from test iterate. So let's train it. 
Alrighty, so the model is trained. 98% accuracy, almost 99, so pretty good. Yeah, it took around for well, nine minutes, so it was pretty fast. Thanks, Google Call up And yeah, that's how the plots look like. Obviously, it can be optimized. You can basically play with it, add some additional layer, change the learning rate. So there's a lot of things that can be optimized here and fine-tuned. But yeah, that's it for today. If you enjoy it, hit the like and subscribe button. And see you in the next one.